Hey y'all, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing an honest and detailed review of our experience using Bookshark Science Level C. Let's dive in. First of all, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Kayla. I'm a second generation homeschool mom, which means I am a homeschool graduate turned homeschool mama. I'm currently homeschooling my fourth grader and my first grader. I also have an 18 month old who likes to pretend to join in on lessons and baby girl number four is due in April. We are in our sixth year of homeschooling and on this channel, I love to chat all the nerdy homeschool things and also just general mama life stuff. So if any of that interests you, I hope you will consider subscribing and staying around. Okay, so let's chat about Bookshark Science. This has been our first year using anything by Bookshark. Bookshark is really the definition of a big box, all-in-one curriculum. They do offer resources for all of your main school subjects. So history, science, math, and language arts. You can choose to purchase a package for just one of those subjects, or you can choose to purchase a package for all of those subjects. This year, I decided to try out their science program. So I can't speak to their history or their math or their language arts. I've never used any of those resources from Bookshark, but I am a little bit more than two thirds of the way through an entire science level. So now that I've had some time with this program, I feel really confident sharing my thoughts and my review with you guys. So let's just start with some FAQs. The first one is, how does Bookshark live up to what it advertises itself as, as far as its science program? So Bookshark promises that their curriculum is literature-based, hands-on, open and go, and faith neutral. And I have seen that all of those statements are true. They're definitely marketing themselves correctly. This program is exactly that. For science, they send you a giant box, which is mostly books. I found that the books they selected were perfectly appropriate for the age range that level C is geared towards which is ages seven to nine, or like a first to fourth grade level. If you would like to see everything that's included with this level, as far as the teacher's guide, the student worksheets, the experiment guide, and all of the beautiful books that you're going to be pulling assigned reading from for the entire year, I do have an unboxing video for you guys. I will put that in the cards and also link it below. That was an unboxing video that I did eight months ago when we first received our science package. I show everything to you guys really thoroughly there, including flip throughs of all of the books and also the experiment supply kit that's included. So definitely make sure you check out that video if you want to see what exactly you're going to be getting should you decide to purchase this kit. As I mentioned, level C is geared towards that seven to nine age range or first to fourth grade. I think the website actually says second to fourth grade. I personally used this with a first grader and a fourth grader this year. And I felt like it was a really good fit for both of my girls, no problem. Some of the lessons were just a teeny bit advanced for my first grader, but she was definitely able to keep up 99% of the time. So their age and grade range that they market this level for is pretty accurate in my opinion. This science curriculum is literature based in that all of your lessons, all of your discussions are going to be based off of assigned reading that you will be doing from the books that they've included with the program. They do include a variety of types of literature, even though these are all obviously heavily science leaning books. So we have like Usborne and DK, more of a textbook style, lift the flop type books, where it's just a lot of information with some great illustrations, basically like a resource book. These books are beautiful and engaging, but they're just full of information. And then we also had included some more storybook type texts. So we had a couple of magic school bus books. Those books are chock full of scientific information, but you're following a storyline, a narrative with characters. Additionally, our book about Marie Curie was kind of written in a picture book style 
a narrative style. It walks you through some of the high points of Marie Curie's life and career and her journey as a scientist. I can honestly say that we have enjoyed every single one of the books that was included in this curriculum kit. I have zero complaints about the book selections. I can tell that they put a lot of thought into what books they chose. They could have gone in a million different directions but the ones that they selected are really great and I know that we will continue to get a lot of use out of having them in our home library. Okay, open and go. Is this curriculum really open and go? I would say definitely yes. The way that they lay everything out for you in the instructor's guide is so easy to use, so straightforward. I love the way that the plan and schedule is laid out. It gives you all the information that you need but it's written very concisely. I'm not having to flip back and forth or look in the appendix or go to a website and find additional resources. Everything's just right there for you, easy to use. The only part of the curriculum that is not open and go necessarily is there is some upfront prep work that you need to put in. Once you have it prepped and ready to go, you're good for the whole school year. It just takes maybe an hour or two to get things set up at the start of the year. Make sure that your binders are set up and ready to go. It's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward, but I just want to point out there is a teeny bit of prep work. You won't necessarily be able to like open your box and start using this that same day. I mean, you could depending on how much time you have that day, but it would be a challenge. I would say give yourself an afternoon before you know that you're going to be jumping in with this program for your new school year. Sit down, look over everything, sort your pages, get your binder set up, and you're good to go. If you'd like to see how I set up our binder system, I also did a video all about getting organized for the school year, and our binder system is included in that video. So I will link that in the cards and below as well. Bookshark does give you the option of purchasing their binder, which is huge, and in my opinion, not the cutest. I opted to skip their binder and just purchase my own binders. That's worked out really well. I would definitely say you do not need the binder from Bookshark. I don't think there's anything special about it. It's literally just a branded binder. I would say a two inch or a three inch binder for your teaching materials is going to fit just right. And for your kiddos, they don't need anything more than a one inch binder. If you are planning on using one level of science for multiple kiddos, you will need to purchase an additional activity page set for each of your students. Unless you're planning on scanning the pages and making copies for yourself at home, but the quality of the activity sheets from Bookshark is really nice. They're in full color, they're on nice quality paper, so I would recommend just buying the activity sheets from them. So I have my instructor's guide, which has my weekly schedules and my answer key for all of their activity sheets, as well as all the additional teaching information that I may or may not need. And I have that in my teacher's binder, along with lots of other curricula and resources that I pull from throughout the year. Then each of my girls has their student pages organized in their own binders. So anytime we are going to sit down and do a science lesson, it's really easy for me to just say, hey, grab your binder, grab a pencil, let's sit down and do our science lesson. And then the only book that is completely separate from our binder systems is the experiment guide. That is a hefty book in and of itself. I only need to pull that book out once a week, so that lives on our homeschool cart. Speaking of the experiment guide, let's talk about the hands-on learning element of this science program. So each level of Bookshark Science is a full year of learning, 36 weeks. And for each of those weeks, you have an assigned experiment or hands-on scientific demonstration to do together. The instructions for those experiments and demos are in the experiment guide. So that is the purpose of that extra book. There are also a few consumable pages in that book. Depending on the experiment, some of them have additional worksheets or charts to fill out. And so those pages are just meant to be torn out and used. You can also purchase an additional copy of all of the consumable pages from the experiment guide so that you have copies for each of your kiddos. Bookshark also includes a supplies kit for the experiments. It does not have every single item that you will need. 
but it has almost every single item that you will need. That's an important distinction to make. I think most of the items that are not included in the kit, it's perfectly understandable why they weren't included. So things like a hair dryer and a microwave, they're just assuming that most of us have those in our house and obviously they cannot include those in the kit. There have been a couple of times where the items that we were supposed to have from our house were a little bit harder for me to track down, but I would say those instances are few and far between and it hasn't happened often enough to be annoying to me whatsoever. So my overall review of Bookshark Science is it was exactly what I was hoping to get when I decided to try it out this year. It has checked all the boxes for me. My girls and I have thoroughly enjoyed it and we are more than likely going to be sticking with Bookshark and purchasing level D for next year. However, I do want to point out a couple of downsides to this curriculum. These downsides are not affecting my personal choice to use Bookshark again in the future, but I think they're important for you to know if you are considering using this curriculum, these might factor into your decision. So the first downside I've kind of already touched on. The Experiment Supply Kit does not have every single item that you will need for every experiment throughout the year. So if you're truly looking for a kit that includes every single item, this isn't going to be it. I still feel like the kit from Bookshark far outweighs other science programs where there has not been a supply kit included and I'm having to source all of the materials for our experiments or hands-on activities myself. Bookshark still wins in my opinion but it's important for you to know that you will still have to go around your house and find a couple of things. The second downside also has to do with the experiments. The experiments and demos don't always tie in perfectly with your lessons for that week. Usually they do. Usually there's an overarching theme that you can see and the experiment ties in with that theme. So for example, learning about the rock cycle and then your experiment is using different techniques to melt crayons and show how they might combine with each other. And that really effectively shows the differences between how igneous sedimentary and metamorphic rock form naturally in the earth. However, there might be another week where you're learning about the states of matter, solids, liquids, gas, and then your experiment is more zoology or biology where you're learning about why different animals swim the way that they do. Both of those topics are really interesting but they don't exactly mesh well together. So I did occasionally find myself either skipping an experiment or switching the order in which we were doing experiments and saving certain ones for when we were studying something more closely related and on topic. There were also a couple of experiments that we weren't able to do because we actually don't have a microwave and you needed a microwave to be able to do those experiments. If we end up doing one of the experiments and it doesn't work or it's not our favorite, we don't get the results that we were hoping for, I just chalk that up to that's a scientific experience. That is what it's like in real life to be a scientist. Not all of your experiments are going to go the way that you hope. And I think actually studying Marie Curie this year really helped to make that point to my girls that that's what being a scientist is all about. You're going to keep trying and experimenting and failing. And we haven't failed nearly as much as Marie Curie did. Overall, we've been really happy with the experiments, the supplies, all of that. It's been great. But there were definitely a couple of times where I've had to tweak things or just skip things altogether. The last downside is the way that the curriculum is designed and scheduled. It can feel a little bit like you're just regurgitating information. You read assigned pages and then you fill out your assigned worksheets, which answer questions directly based on what you just read. I do feel like it's important and critical for my kids to have regular review and also for them to have some time to forget information before they're being asked to recall that information. So I do kind of wish that Bookshark would include some intermittent assessments in the program so that you could kind of review and assess your child's recollection of a few weeks worth of lessons. It's not all that difficult for me to do that on my own and that's 
basically what I've been doing. So let's just summarize really quick. What I love about Bookshark Science, it's literature based and I love the book selections. It's open and go, very easy to use. I can even assign my kids to do some of the lessons independently, which is a huge plus. I like that I can cover the material family style with both of my kiddos. We like the worksheets. My kids are naturally kids that just enjoy worksheets. And I think that the worksheets from Bookshark are really well done. They're colorful and illustrated. My kids enjoy doing them. They're also very concisely written and easy to use. The curriculum is faith neutral and I really appreciate that. It was something that I was looking for in a science curriculum and this totally ticks that box as well. And I'm running out of fingers here, but the last thing that I really love about Bookshark is the wide range of topics and themes and areas of science that we've gotten to cover this year. We got to dive into earth science again. So the structure of the earth, the rock cycle, plate tectonics, landforms, bodies of water, weather, climate, storms, volcanoes, the water cycle, all of that fun stuff. We also got to learn about the states of matter, we got to learn about the periodic table. We got to study Marie Curie and learn about her life and career as a scientist. Now we are in the zoology portion of the year where we are going continent by continent and learning about the amazing habitats that can be found in each of those continents and of course the incredible creatures in each of those habitats. So far we've covered South America, we got to learn about lots of habitats in South America, and we specifically zeroed in on studying the rainforest a bit more, which has been so much fun. We've already discovered animals we've never heard of, so we've gotten to go down some rabbit trails in learning about these new to us animals. So I'm very excited for the next few weeks of zoology. After the zoology portion, I believe for the last five or six weeks of the school year, there is a botany unit. Now, we already had an entire year of botany in our previous school year with a different science curriculum. So I'm not sure how much we're going to dive in with botany this year. My girls might just roll their eyes and be like, Mom, we already know all of this. But on the schedule, we are supposed to be going over, you know, the parts of plants, photosynthesis, pollination, edible plants, types of trees, tree ecosystems. So I will see how much we want to dive into botany this year since we did it so extensively last year. The actual book that Bookshark included, I think it's a DK book that we're supposed to be pulling from for all of the botany unit. That's a new book to us. It's not one that we've read before. So that might make a difference. Maybe that book will be really interesting and my kids won't mind reviewing some of this stuff that we covered last year. I'll just have to wait and see. Okay, so let's look at what a week of Bookshark would typically look like. So this is my teacher's binder. I have my instructor's guide as one of the many things that I have in my teacher's binder. But everything I need for Bookshark Science is right here. So I just want to show you really quickly the subject list for Science C. The Bookshark website does a really great job of helping you to select a science level, both based on the grade and age range that you are looking to teach. And they also make it really easy to view and download these week by week subject lists for each of their levels of science so that you can see exactly what topics are being covered. Okay, so going into our instructor's guide here, I am just going to flip to the week that we are actually on. So week 22 here, and I'm going to bring you in nice and close. So for every week, you're going to have a page just like this. This is your schedule for the week. Bookshark has you on a four-day schedule, which is already really nice because they're automatically giving you a day off every week, basically. I've actually found that it's pretty easy to modify this even more. I've had weeks where I do this on a three-day schedule, and I've also had weeks where I do this on a two-day schedule. Let's say you're the family where you want to try to get all of your science in on one day a week, and you have like a designated day that that's your science day, I think you could technically make that work. Now every single week is going to look basically the same where you're going to have assigned reading and assigned activity sheets for days one, two, and three 
And then day four is designated for your experiment. They do also include some optional activities and sort of discussion prompts. I'll be honest with you, I literally never do the optional activities or discussion prompts. I don't feel like they're super necessary for us. I don't feel like they add a whole lot to it, but they do have them there and I appreciate that they have them. They do make this nice and easy if you're the kind of person that likes to jot down notes Maybe you have a couple of videos in mind that are not included in their schedule, but you want to watch those this week, or you have additional books that you want to read together. You can notate all of that in this schedule, which is really nice. So this is kind of your quick reference schedule. And then they have laid out for you each of your days in more detail, or at least information for you to reference as you're going through this lesson. And then same thing for day two. They have some more details on one of the optional activities. For this day, it's asking your child to make a diary entry from the perspective of an anteater or armadillo. And it says you can do this assignment orally. You could have your child tell you what to write and you do the physical writing, or you could have your child do the actual writing if they want to and if they have the skills to do that. This one in particular actually looks like one that I would consider doing with my kids. Another paragraph here for day three that gives you just a little bit more information. And then another optional activity. This one is just using the internet to research the migration of the monarch butterfly together. You could also use this little prompt Say if you had some more picture books about monarch butterflies, maybe this would be a good week to pull those in and read those together. And then day four, it has our experiment described here. And then you have your answer key for the student activity sheets for week 22. And then immediately after that, you have the schedule for the following week. So all that you need to know for the entire week is in these two pages which is really nice because normally I will actually pull out these two pages for whichever given week that we are on and I will just stick these in my planner so that I don't need to be flipping through my cumbersome teacher's binder every day that we're doing science and I can just easily reference this. The other option that I've done, and here's my homeschool planner, is on my weekly overview page, I will just list out each of these days sort of in chunks. So I know that these two checkboxes are meant to be on day one, these two checkboxes are meant to be on day two, this is day three, and then my demo. And then if I have any additional books or activities, I'll list that as well. And then I can decide how I schedule these out for the week and just check them off as I go. So this is from the previous week, week 21. And I'll just show you, here's my column for science. We were able to do all of the assigned Bookshark material in three days instead of their four-day schedule. I squeezed it into three days, and then I had my fourth day for additional resources that I pulled. One was a picture book about the rainforest, and one was an animal drawing activity. Neither of those are part of Bookshark. Those were just supplemental things that I personally wanted to pull in this week. I find it super easy to tie in more picture books or videos or activities if I want to. I definitely don't do that every week. It's definitely not necessary. This curriculum stands on its own just great. I'm just the kind that will, you know, pull in a video or an extra picture book. And it's really easy to do that because I'm not overwhelmed with what the curriculum has scheduled for me. Okay, so this is a week in the zoology portion of the year. So the book that we are reading from is Usborne World of Animals, which I have right here. I actually shared this book on my Instagram stories the other day because I love it so much. It's probably my favorite book that came with this entire science level. So this is an Usborne book. It does have internet links throughout. The way that it's laid out is you have several pages of sort of general animal facts, and then you are going through continent by continent. So the way that they scheduled out your year with Bookshark is completely based on the way that this book is laid out, which is really fantastic. I just love that Bookshark scheduled things out according to the resource books that they're including. 
they're not going to send you any books or require you to purchase any books that you're going to look at two pages out of for the whole year. I've seen science curricula do that and it drives me insane. The books that they've selected and included are actual spines for the whole year. You're going to be reading everything. So for this week on day one, they have us reading this book, pages 40 and 41 which is all about the Amazon. As you can see, this book is definitely geared towards kids. The text is large. The information is broken up into these bite-sized paragraphs. Most of the time, my first grader has no trouble reading this book. My fourth grader definitely never has trouble reading this book, unless, you know, it's a word like this, an unfamiliar animal name. You know, we can easily look up how to pronounce that. But for the most part, this book has been great for my girls to join in on the reading. Maybe we take turns. I assign paragraphs to each of my daughters. Or maybe I have one read one page and the other read the other page. You switch it up depending on the day. But this would be your assigned reading for one day. And then after you do that assigned reading, you have activity sheet questions one through four. So I'll just bring over my daughter's binder so that you can see that. This is the activity sheet for week 22. It's, let's see, one, two, three, four pages. Normally it's only two pages, but for this week we're doing a little bit of map work. So it's a little bit extra. On day one, we're only doing questions one through four. So that's this, 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 and this. So we have labeling the Amazon River on our South America map. We have adding our animal cutouts to the back of your map. So we have boxes for those, and that's what these are for. So basically cut and paste. And there's an opportunity for writing. I would say pretty much every single activity sheet for every week, they have a little bit of writing. I modify this. My fourth grader does these on her own. My first grader will usually narrate to me an answer and then I will write it out for her. And then question four is circle the rodents. So they have four options. They need to pick out the two rodents out of these four options. And that is an entire science lesson for day one. You're assigned reading, a little bit of worksheet work, that's it. For day two, it's exactly the same thing. We're going to our next set of pages. Pages 42 and 43, we're going to be reading about the grassland life. And then we do the assigned activity sheets. For day two, it's questions five and six. We have more map work. We're shading in where the grasslands are in South America. And then we have more cut and paste for our creatures. And that's all for day two. For day three, we're transitioning to North America. So we have the introductory set of pages for North America, which has a nice large map and shows a lot of the animals that live in North America. We also have a nice color key for some of those different habitats. And it actually wants us to do pages 44 through 47. So we'd have this introductory page and then the following pages, which are talking about the Rocky Mountains and the animals that live there. And then again, we have our activity sheets. So we're doing questions seven through 10, which would be this last section of our activity sheet. So we have a little bit of map work in seven and eight. We're finishing up the cut and paste animal activity here. And then our last question is give two reasons why baby black bears learn to climb trees. So they would list those. And that's it for your actual lesson instruction time. Now the last component of our week day four is our experiment day. So that is where you will need to pull out the experiment guide which is kind of a hefty book. So we have a question at the start of every experiment. How does camouflage help animals survive in the savanna? Now, see, this is kind of what I'm talking about when I say that not every experiment ties in exactly perfectly with what you've been learning. Because this week, we've been wrapping up South America and starting North America, and yet we're learning about the savanna, which would kind of lend itself more towards Africa. All of your experiment weeks are going to be broken down this way. So you're going to have your key concepts here. 
this is really an overview of what you're supposed to be learning and focusing on. Any key vocabulary will be over here. And then on this second page, you'll have your material list. Now, this symbol, the letter K, shows you what material is included in your science kit. And then this symbol, the letter P, shows what you will need from the consumable paper packet. So for this particular week, we actually have quite a bit of paper going on. Not every week is like that. Let me show you another example. So going back to this experiment, which was a DIY compass, most of your supplies were from the kit, and then you had a few things that you needed to get from the house, and then a couple of consumable paper packet pages. So this is obviously far less in the kit and far more paper. And then we have a few general things that they expect pretty much every homeschool family is going to have these lying around. Scissors, a hole punch, glue, and colored pencils. That's pretty easy. I don't need to look for those. They're already in our homeschool room. Then you have your introduction. So in this case, there's a little bit for just parents to read first before we jump into the actual introduction. This is information that you would read out loud to your kiddos together to get them started on this experiment. After the introduction, we have a prompt to make a prediction, and then we get into the experiment or demo itself. You will occasionally have some supplemental information in the margins of these pages, and then you'll have very clear, numbered, step-by-step -step instructions. You'll have discussion questions, more to look at and read together, more to discuss, and then your takeaway, your conclusion at the end. They also will generally have an option to go further to do more research. And then just behind the experiment, these are going to be the consumable pages that you are using for this activity. So I would go ahead and tear all of these out. I already have an extra copy of each of these in my teacher's binder since I did purchase that additional student packet. And then that is it. That is a whole week with Bookshark. I forgot to mention earlier that they also do give you a supply list and a shopping planning list for the next week. So anything that they're expecting you to have around the house will be included on this page and then also in your experiments book. So you have two reference points for any additional supplies that you're going to need to provide. I think this curriculum is just really easy to use and really easy to schedule and to modify. You can definitely simplify this and you can also add on to it to beef it up more really easily. I would love to hear from you in the comments. What are you using for science this year? What are you loving about it? Have you tried Bookshark yet? Let's chat down below. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.